Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS, and in this lesson, I'm going to be talking about ungaged lateral inflows. Ungaged lateral inflows is a feature in HECRAS, specifically in the run unsteady flow analysis. If you click on options right down here, it says ungaged lateral inflows. So what we're going to be talking about in this lesson is this dialog box and this and how this feature works. All right, um, just to take a step back here, the user's manual does have a page on computed ungaged lateral inflows. I'm going to leave this link here as the first link in the description of the video. And yeah, if you go ahead and make your screen wide enough, you'll see this side menu here. So what I'll be talking about is the contents within these sub pages as well, not just this first page here. Also wanted to uh, make a reference. The second link in the video description is to the HECRAS hydraulic reference manual, which also has some information, specifically the information about sequential and simultaneous options when we go to uh, set up our ungaged lateral inflow data. Okay, so let's go back to HECRAS. What do we have here in a model is a very simple river system. It's got river station cross sections every 1,000 feet down to zero. What I'm going to do is give an inflow hydrograph as the upstream boundary condition. And then down here at river station 1,000, I'm going to pretend I have a monitoring station with flow and stage data that's been recorded. And that flow data is going to be actually higher than the flow data at river station 3,000. And hence, HECRAS in this ungaged lateral inflow feature will be able to uh, tell me that difference. And then HECRAS will be able to deter determine what is the ungaged lateral inflow at this location based on all of my user inputs. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to click on the Edit Unsteady Flow Data. Now, what I have already is the normal depth is the downstream boundary condition. And then the flow hydrograph at the upstream end of the reach. I have flow hydrograph. Here's the data. And then here is the plot. Okay. What I need to do next is introduce an intermediate cross section boundary condition, such as River Station 1000. So let me cl close this, click on Add River Station, click 1000, and then click OK. All right. Now, when I, for this boundary condition, I'm going to click on IB stage slash flow. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and paste in the data. So control V paste. I have some stage data right there. And then I just went back to Excel and copied in the flow data onto my clipboard. Control V and boom, there is my flow data. And I can go ahead and plot that as well. Okay, so I'm going to close that. Let's see. So I'm using simulation time. That's the same as the upstream boundary condition at River Station 3000. And we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and say file, save unsteady flow data. Okay, so then I'll close this. Next, I'll click on Run and Unsteady Flow Analysis. I have a three-day simulation I'm running with a one-minute computation interval and a one-hour hydrograph output interval. So what I want to do now is click on Options and then Ungaged Lateral Inflows. There's two optimization modes here. There's sequential and simultaneous. I referenced this earlier just briefly because the hydraulic reference manual does give an explanation of how both of these work. Uh, in one sentence, sequential will sequentially evaluate one double boundary condition at a time. That's what this DBC abbreviation stands for. So the double boundary condition would be that intermediate location or cross section where you have observed data. And then once convergence is reached for that first double boundary condition, you move on to step seven. And then step seven tells you to move down to the next double boundary condition station, run the same simulation. Finally, step 13 so tells you that the iteration is complete. If it's not the last double boundary condition, uh, repeat step seven by going down to the next station. All right. And then the other mode here for simulation is simultaneous. And what this does is it basically evaluates the total tolerance or average error for all time periods versus the convergence one at a time. And then in step six here, it uses this equation three to distribute the ungaged inflow at point, as both point and uniform lateral inflow. And it's also lagged back in time. So if I click on the theory link over here, this is where we have equation two. I believe this is equation two, just the difference of the flow rates. 
And then let's see, if I go down to the next page, optimization of ungauged flow, I believe this is what they're referring to as equation three, but I'm not sure because it's the only other equation in this entire uh, part of the document. But anyway, that's my best guess. Let's go ahead and use a sequential. And then for optimization target, this is, uh, there's two different methods. There's stage, which is forecast mode. And then there's flow, which is historical records. Now for stage, it's going to use the observed stage data primarily. And then it may use the, the flow data. And then for flow, it'll use the flow data primarily. And the stage data is required in this case, but uh, probably just as backup. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on stage. Next for number of iterations and flow convergence, I'm gonna type in a one and a 100. So what's gonna happen is this routine is gonna run until the error is less than this tolerance value or the maximum number of iterations has been hit. If I make this number smaller, the flow convergence, then it'll probably take a little bit longer to converge, but the accuracy of the solution will be better. All right, and then smoothing window right here refers to the running average. It's meant to smooth out ungauged inflow data. So for instance, if it was evaluating five o'clock PM, then it's actually, and the time interval is one hour, then what it's actually gonna do is average out 4.30 PM to 5.30 PM. If um, I decide to make this smoothing window three hours, it's not gonna be a one hour average, it would be a three hour average and hence it would take the average values from 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. So that would be a three hour time window and it would str straddle that particular time period of interest, which is 5 p.m. If your results demonstrate unnatural spikes or dips, that's one reason you may want to increase the smoothing window time period here. All right, down below, we need to actually reference that observed flow data. So I'm gonna go ahead and click new. Now I need to just give it a name. So this is a string. I'm just gonna call this area between river station 1000 and 3000, and then click okay. So that's listed right here. I can rename the name. I can toggle between different areas. Now I need to reference the flow data that's associated with this area. So I'm gonna set the river station. And this is important that I make sure it's 1000 right here. So the river station 1000 right here needs to be the same river station I used right here, 1000 for that internal boundary stage slash flow boundary condition. All right, so down below here, I can have the different sub areas as you may call them. Now down here, I need to add lateral inflow or add uniform lateral inflow. So I'm gonna add uniform lateral inflow from river station 3000 down to 1000, click okay. And I can also delete that record right here if I want, but let's, uh, let's keep it in there. Okay. So that went ahead and populated the first few columns here of this row, river reach, and then upper and lower river station. The percent will also automatically be calculated based on the area. So if I just type in say 80, like 80 square miles or acres or whatever. The units is not important as long as it's consistent with all the other areas that are entered for other rows in this table. Now I'm only gonna have one row, so the percentage is always 100%. But if I had additional rows, um, say 1000 down to zero, and then I put this as say 50, then the percentages will update. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that row. And then the time lag in hours, I'm gonna say this is three hours. Regarding this lag time here, since the ungauged inflow enters the river system some time and distance upstream of the measuring gauge, that observed location, this lag time will be the amount of time HECRAS shifts the lateral hydrograph back in time when it routes the inflow and reruns the program. So that's that pretty important right there. And then for max flow, min flow, in DSS part B, these are all optional fields. So the min and max flow, that's basically the minimum and maximum values that HECRAS will return for the ungauged lateral inflow. If left blank, then there won't be any limit enforced. And then the last field here, DSS part B, when HECRAS writes its results to the DSS file, then the specific paths that are associated with the ungauged lateral inflow will have whatever text you type in here. Okay. So just a string. 
but I'm going to leave it blank. And if you leave it blank, it's going to just default to say something like ungaged in flow and then the river station. So we're going to just leave it blank and see what that looks like. All right, let's uh, go ahead and click OK here. Now, when I have done that, I can go back up to options and we see a check mark next to ungaged lateral inflow. That just means we have data here that's going to run as part of the compute. And then also, instead of clicking options and then ungaged lateral inflow, you can open up this dialog box uh, a little bit more directly if you just double click on the label down here that says ungaged lateral inflow. So if I double click, boom, that opens up like that. All right, I think I'm ready to go here. Let me just save the plan here and then click compute. OK, so it's running through a few different iterations, I think. OK, so that looks successful. I'm going to go ahead and look at some results, but actually the reference manual, the user's manual also mentions the results saved in DSS view. So I'm going to go ahead and just open up the results from the DSS file directly. So go file, open. This is DSS view, by the way. Navigate to the DSS file and then open. Here are all the paths. And then if I scroll down to the very bottom, I have this one that says ungaged inflow at 3000. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And here is the hydrograph that represents that ungaged inflow. It starts near zero. It increases to about 140 CFS and then back down to zero. I can also open up the table data if I'm interested in seeing what the actual numbers are. And then if I wanted to include, say, the flow rate at River Station 3000 and 1000, these are going to be much larger flows, I believe. Yep. So the green line here is the River Station 1000. This is 3000. And then yellow down here is that ungaged lateral inflow between River Stations 1000 and 3000 based on all the input data that we provided at RAS. Well, that's it for this lesson. What we did was we set up our model with some flow data. And then in the boundary conditions, Right here, unsteady flow data. We set up this internal boundary condition with stage and flow data. And then after that, we went to the unsteady flow analysis, options, ungaged lateral inflow, entered this data, ran the simulation, and ultimately came up with an answer for the hydrograph of ungaged lateral inflow between two cross sections of our model.